Hello, this is Max Straker. I'd just like to talk about this um, uh, app that's coming out. There's an Amazon Honeycode. Um, it, businesses develop apps without code. So it's a bit like Glide Apps, in my opinion. And uh, so I thought I'd give it a bit of an explore first. So we just want to see how the interface works and things like that. So if we just pop over to um, uh, the actual item itself, um, builds custom apps without programming. Uh, prepare apps data in tables. So again, very similar to Glide apps like that. It looks like a spreadsheet, works like a database. Yep. Create with App Builder. It then has an interface, a bit like um, uh, uh, MIT um, App Inventor, where you actually have uh, the back data and then you also have a front interface that you kind of make pretty as such like that. Then you can personalize for each um, uh, team member. So I think you can filter out. So therefore, if somebody's showing data, and you can make it so it only shows data for that particular one. And then you can also do automations with it. So this is a little bit like um, UPath and those ones. So it's a sort of robotic sort of um, idea that you can actually add little features onto these and you can share with your team and you can access anywhere update anytime so it's a mobile app and it can actually work on the website as well so it looks interesting and uh, if we just hop over to the next page which I've got there is a pricing one where um, for zero dollars a month which is a nice price I like it you can have 2,500 rows uh, per workbook unlimited number of workbooks and include 20 members so I wanted to see what this was like in regards to something like Glide Apps or, or, or a similar one for, for that. So um, I went into a bit of an explore. So um, when you actually go into there, we're just going to log on because I do want to talk about logging on and things like that. And if you and, and this is something I just leave you with at this point in time, it, you to actually to make you've got to make an account and you've got to create an AWS Honeycomb Honeycode account, uh, but you need a work email address. Now, if you haven't got a work email address or you don't want to use your work email address for these sort of things, there is a way around that, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So anyway, we're just going to go back to the sign in, and I'm just going to sign in uh, with me and uh, so you've got to go and dick around with your passport and all of that the password sorry and we're going to think about it now dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. and we come in now it has this overall interface where all of your apps sit so if you hit this honeycomb thing at the top or honeycore or whatever it is you've got um, it's almost like it's repeating itself in a way, simple to do and all of this. But what this is, this, the top one, which looks like a bookcase ones, this is actually the interface which you'd build, and this is the actual app. So this is the app, and this is the apps down here, and this is the build through here. Now, on the interface through here as well, you're logged in at this person here, and you have Teams. So what you can actually do is, um, this is this one here, and that's your team, and you can be shared with by other teams. So other teams can, the other ones can give you those. So if you're working, you, you've got your account, which actually has yours, and what you actually do is you create a workbook, which is almost like it's a, you create a, a project. And if we just, so you can import some CSV files, so that means you can pull in some data. You can use a te template. Now I'm just going to go and do a, um, I pulled in a couple to do here. We're going to go um, time off reporting. We do one like that. Now you see, first thing that comes up here is this gets a little bit nuff, nuffy because I'm in Firefox browser. Seems to work fine actually, but it says it's not fully supported yet. Log in with Google Chrome. Now I haven't built anything at this point in time. Now when you actually look at this particular app, so we're just going to go back to the original ones. Now I've just pulled in this app and uh, we're just going to go through and we're just going to click on the actual app itself to see what it looks like. So on that front face we've gone through. Now this is what the the app looks like on um, a web page but you can also have this and you see it's got different tabs so um, for this one there they're like simple pages so if you got this on a mobile device obviously it'd be a lot more narrow but it would still have these three tabs um, but in a in a slightly different ma method um, so if we come back to this this is really your home the bit on the the, the bit at the top 
um, we'll now go into the other side and if we click on this part here this takes you in to where the data is so you've got the table side of the data that gives you a table and what it is and there's some filtering going through here I'm not really bothered about that at the moment and then you've got the um, we're going to use this device manager at this point in time I've got a clue what it is and this is where you can put things in so summary of data I can put this and this is um, the mobile look of what it looks like and then if I'm on a web page this is what it looked like on there so again you have these little things that you can pull across so you can actually pull across um, objects and drag, drag them onto your um, uh, actual interface that you have here um, we're going to drop that down again and you can see it's got three or four pages through here so one summary of data there details so if we look at that one and you see that one goes down for quite a way because obviously there's something there but you see I've got the three tabs coming through here similar to what we view on a web app if we come through on the web you see we've got these new tabs through here so this is actually the building template that we like to use and if I go through here there's a whole action stuff here I actually haven't bothered building an app yet I've just been exploring about how you deploy it because if it's an onerous thing to deploy something like this you know why engage yourself you want to see what it does and, and say so you just want the big picture so if we just go um, back out of that app you, we, you can see we've created a project or something like that with the app now what this now does is that I can deploy this to my device now if I just go over I've got some screenshots um, and so on my um, Android phone I tried doing a uh, Chrome a, a, a Chromecast uh, across to my screen it was just very very sluggish with um, having OBS running so um, I've just got it um, as a whole load of screenshots what you do is you load uh, download this now I'm working in Android so I've just gone onto the Android uh, Google Play Store and, and, and downloaded this um, you can uh, you can get it I presume you can get it in iPhone, but I actually haven't seen that yet. So that's the, the app that you download. And when you download it, it comes onto your thing. And there's a little icon here. Now, if you've got any notifications, if we just pop back into the actual screen itself, you see there's a notification there. This is an older screenshot. But if you have a notification there, that notification pops up as a little number one on that icon there. So you can see if things have been updated or there's something that you need to respond to in an app <coughs> if you've got those sorts of things. So you've got that. Um, uh, a little icon through there and then if you click on the icon it takes you to your list of apps that you actually have down here that you can then do so if I click on this one this was a very early screenshot again you're logged in now when you log in on the other one um, you've got to log in initially but you can stay logged in so you don't actually have to log in every five minutes or anything like that once you're logged in you're logged in unless you can't log out again and again your notifications show up here if you want to do something and there's different display areas and if you click on that icon there it takes you to the end ones where you, this is just a little task list that I was actually just playing with so as I said I haven't actually built an app at all all I'm actually doing is just how it, how you would um, use it so that comes through onto there now again it's also got a sign in so this is what you'd use at the beginning you'd have the same interface for signing in with your email address and your password as to what you would actually have if you were going in on the website as well so those are the features that you'd actually see on your mobile app which is quite fine really you know the only thing is you've got to have their app to download and then their interface then allows you to open up the other apps in there so that's the one part of it now the other part of it is unlike glide app this one here is only for sharing amongst your team. So this is where these include 20 members. That means you can share it with 20 members. Now, the member side of things is quite an interesting little one as well. When you look at your teams, um, like if I wanted to share an app with somebody, now here's a funny thing. Now, if I, if I, if I actually choose somebody to come into my team, Sorry, so I'm going to go into my team interface. So I'll click on the teams, and this takes me into here. Now I can add a team member. Now, if I add a team member, and I'm just going to go uh, max test. So I've got a dummy one. Uh, sorry, I've actually got to put that in there. So I've actually just got to change that to test. 
Now, this person here, you've given them two levels of rights. You can give them a member or you can give them an administration level. So the admin level means that they can go in and mess around with what, sorry, that means they have the power to alter an app if you decide to share it. So you've got a, a, a sort of a structure. And unfortunately, by the look of it, once you've got a team member, they can either be a member or they can be admin. And but that's that that's the, the, the choice. You, the, you you can't suddenly say so. If you add a whole load of people and people that you want to work with, and then you want people just to run your apps, you can either designate them as a member or you can designate them as an admin. But it seems you've only got one choice with it. So if we go back to the apps through here. We can now share this one here. So I've just done this inventory manager one. No, did I do that? No, I've just done this time off reporting one. Well, it seems like a nice one here. Whereas I can either do the interface one or I can actually do an app. So I can share this app as a basic app and I've got a feeling that this is the manager so I can do an oversight and I can see a lot of the other ones where this one most probably has filters so that only the person putting their information in can see their own information and not other people's information. So if I want to share that with somebody, I can go and share and I've got to put in their email address. So I'm just going to do that and put in, whoops, and to then hopefully test to come up there and test. And therefore, I've given them, um, oh, sorry, I haven't done it there. Uh, so I can now, that's the one, isn't it? There. So, so I'm, you can see he's only an app user because he's only a member. He's not an admin. So therefore, any time I offer this person who's in my team, he only gets that level on whatever app. If I try, and this is something which I haven't actually tried to do, oh, bugger, and I've gone the wrong way there. If I try sharing it with there, this would be interesting, actually, because I didn't think I could. I haven't tried this yet. And we're just going to test. Ah, your mother. There we go. Ah, now I can actually offer to let him come in as a collaborator. Now, now that's quite good because I didn't think I could. So therefore, oh, that's good. So although I've only given him inside my team, uh, only one level of hierarchy as such, I've allowed him to only be a member. When I'm actually sharing the actual uh, coding of the app. So if I just look into that one, we come into the tables, we come into the front interface of what we've got, they can actually come in. We can actually choose that to actually allow them to come in and do some more traces. Um, you. So um, that's quite nice. For, that confused me initially to only give them one uh, level of approval. Now, when you actually do go through and if we just come back into there and give them a sharing, when they log in, they will have a similar interface to this in their one and then they'll have the list of their apps. Now, they can also be building apps themselves, and I can be part of their team, and they can share, because they're the administrator there, they can share their apps with me, either at a low level, as in just a member, so I can actually just use the app, or at an admin level or collaborator level where I can do something. And again, this requires emails to come through, because if we just go into the email side of things and go into... Uh, the inbox through here. First of all, um, you need, when you actually create your account, you've got to confirm your account before it actually lets you in to use Honeycomb. Then when I actually send something through, so when I'm actually send something through to test PIR and just say, I want to share an app with you, they see this, but then they've got to go and log in and it's only when they press this button, if they just log in independently of this, they just log into the thing themselves, unless they press this button, they don't receive that extra app that I might have actually said, I want you to use this app, you know, to offer them to be part of the team, team to use. So um, that's just something that I've been playing with and using. So the interface is, is a little bit cumbersome, I think, setting up. But once you set it up, it flies. 
Now, I just briefly want to go back and just talk about, um, uh, let me just see if we, oh, that's gone dull. Cancel. Um, when we come back here, is it going to do anything for me? I think it's just going to log in now because I'm logged in. Yes. Uh, now, I want to just go back to this issue of, oh, blast, I'm always getting that one. I always go to this top one instead of logging out down here with your profile. So if I'm signing out through here and I come through, now this I, I've ended up um, having some issues with on other ones where they ask you to enter a, a, a work email address. If you've got a Hotmail account or you've got a, um, a Gmail account or something like that, it just bounces you. Those things are all blacklisted. So how do you get an account that will work in here, an email address? Now, what I did initially is um, I there's a award space uh, which does free hosting, and you can also get free domains. Now, the domains have got very, very silly um IDs on them and the domains are something like uh, at you can name them 12756 or whatever but it then goes dot dx and then it goes dot axp or something so they all have these odd little double dots that allows you so they're not particularly elegant but they work fine um, and uh, things like uh, Amazon AWS and the rest they recognize them as not being um uh, personal emails, they see them as being um, uh, business emails. So that's one way you can do it. So you can go on to the free hosting side of here. You can set up your own very basic um, uh, WordPress website. And while doing that, at the same time, when you're actually linking into that interface, you get a free email as well. So you only get one of them, So um, uh, and you can log in with whatever login that you actually want to do. You can log in with your Google and Gmail to do that. So you do get your ones, and they do go to that. But if you've got something like Thunderbird, you can actually just set up your thing so that they just come through onto those ones there. So... Um, I have got a video about setting up your own free website and doing that, and I'll put a link into that down below. Now, going back to the actual app itself, um, now we're just going to go, and we're still logged in. We're going to log in again. Are we logged in? Uh, well, we are logged in. So if we just go back into this, oh, no, we're logged out again. Are we logged in or logged out? No, we got to log in. Uh so when we log back in again here, um, the next thing is the apps themselves. Uh, and just looking briefly on some of the things that you can do with this, in some ways it has the sort of nature of a, um, and let's just go in and look at this time off report. Ah, oh, no, I don't actually want to do that, I don't think. Let's just see if there's any automation. Ah, so this one, the automation that it's got, the third part, when we were actually looking at this point here, is uh, put it to work with automations. In this one here, the automation that it actually has is notifications. So it will notify people or something when something's updated, and you can most probably focus on who it does. But if we just go back to the actual build themselves, and we just look at the time off one, or this is a standard interface coming through here, you've got these objects that you can add, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of them. There's forms, there's um, uh, some column lists, um, blocks, and some blank blocks. They've got some input fields and pick lists and numbers and contacts and currencies dates and there's time coming through there and then you've got some layouts aesthetics and presumably you can add some color and you can do some things like that because they've got pretty buttons and things like that and in some ways um, those you've got to drag that block across and bring that block in and slowly build up each page as you want so you'd actually just think about it and then it's got actions and then it's got um, most probably data or something associated with some of these links through here depending on the properties of these boxes that you bring in these may actually have certain things that they come through now as i said i haven't actually built anything through there so i wonder if i can just drag that off i don't know where you've been there from maybe delete um uh, but the the thing is what that what i've th thought about this is an environment that basically you're working in a small group of people and you want to share things or else you actually have things like uh you're a supplier and you're supplying so somebody in a company can actually just log in open an app and that app 
is has a list of all your supplies and they can then select their supplies and you can actually invoice them based on the supplies that they picked and most probably give them a timing thing. So it's a more a business to business rather than a social app. It doesn't seem to have things like... Um, uh, also, it's got you can do a readme file in there as well. I haven't played with that, but that's quite a useful thing for if you're giving somebody a first time user, you can give them explanations of how they're supposed to use the app or not. And it's usually handy to actually just have something where, where, where people can go to to find those sorts of things. Um, uh, so there's a few other things there that um, after exploring this first thing as an interface, I can see this as a sort of a, a company or a team require some sort of information that they want locked in for themselves that they can use. Now, 2,500 rows is pretty good uh, amount of stuff. Now, that presumably is over uh, three sheets. And uh, on that one there, this time off one, uh, if we just go back, seems to just have one. Oh, no, if you look here, there's one on the people. There's, so that's got three tables. Um, so you can actually have uh, a, few, a whole lot of different tables to set up your interfaces. So in some ways, it's a little bit like a database. You just link between them. And um, what that says is that you're around 2,500 rows. Now, I don't know what happens when there's um, a lot more uh, rows, um, whether you can actually just cut and paste this so you or you can export that data so you can clean up like if it's something for monthly accounts or, or or something that you're doing that you can clean it out so that the next month starts again or whether you just rename it something else and give them a new app um, for the free tier i'm not too sure but it's quite interesting is it's more of a closed system so everybody's locked in and you share and you control the level of sharing and because it's a sort of an enclosed business and encapsulated it's quite a secure place to put things so you can put quite sensitive information relating to uh, your business inside here so from the point of view as if you um, uh, I suppose you, you know if you've got a few friends or something like that and you've got um, their things or you're loaning each other money or something like that um, those sorts of things where you want a bit of security uh, can work through fine they said the only thing that seemed to it tripped me up for quite a while but you know it's like if you want to go and use Azure or you want to use some of the Microsoft things or you want to use some of the um, you know AWS stuff as well they all want a business account uh, or they all want a work account so that they can sort of start pushing a few of their products onto you and your company and also they want you to kind of push it around the company to sort of encourage people to use it within the company so they can make the money. Uh, have no problem with that at all. It's just frustrating when you want to try and use their business stuff and you're only got in a, 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 in a way in a trial method to see how good they are. Also just for learning, for like the AWS environment, uh, 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 Amazon uh, web services are, are very, very complex and there's some fantastic stuff on them. So this one seems to be a nice little standalone. It seems to be quite simple. I think the no coding, it's only seemed to have come out recently because there's not that many videos. And a lot of the videos were just explaining of somebody just wandering through trying to make a little app or something. What I was concerned with is how you deploy it and how you'd link it through. So it's only amongst people who actually have a, uh, an everybody has to create uh, an AWS account. And so if you are other people who do it again and they haven't got and they only use things, then I would suggest you look at the free web hosting things and, and look at something like um, uh, this to, to, to actually use. So I hope that's been of interest for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you found it interesting, uh, please give a thumbs up. I'll most probably play and do a couple of little apps through here. Be interested to do. You, you see, something like this would be really useful from a company point of view if you've got a few, few small people for doing something like timesheets because you'd actually just put in all your timesheets. It all comes to one place. Whoever was in charge of the thing, uh, whoever does the timesheet management and stuff like that, they've got all of the access to all of the data at the back end and they just deal with that. So you can actually have your timesheets. You can actually have your expenses. So from a point of view of an app, uh, you, you, you know, on your front end there, and I'm not too sure how many tabs you're allowed to have on these ones. Most of these demo ones, they've got, um, uh, they've got 
uh, something like three tabs down the bottom, but there's, you know, you can most probably have maybe four or something, and so you could actually have your timesheet on one, you can actually have expenses on another, and maybe a time off or something else. But it's quite easy because this is the interface for this is um, uh, just a list of things. You can also just break them and sandbox them into separate apps for separate features. So you have one for timesheet, one for expenses. Although to a certain extent, if, if you have timesheet and expenses, I've always think you should do on the same one because it's just you go to one place. Sort of juggling between the two can be a bit of a nuisance. That's the way in my opinion to do it. But um, uh, you do it other, other ways. And again, once you've got um, things like that, you can uh, may probably have several tabs and I don't know where that goes so I, I think I'm definitely going to try doing another build I'll do a bit of research that's one of the powers that I see of glide apps over the app inventor by MIT is it works in uh, Android and it works in uh, the the iPhone environment or the, the the iOS environment as well, so so that's good. You're not you're not designing for people who have one specific type of phone and then have to do another build for somebody who has a different a, a different one. So um, uh, I hope that's been of interest. Thank you very much for watching. If you like it, ta-ra. Oops. <laughs>